the concept of ADHD, it can really be a gift, not a curse. Everyone would love to have a faster car, right? It's the same thing. ADHD is a faster brain. If you don't know how to drive that faster car, though, you're going to crash into a tree. So one of the ways that I've learned to use my ADHD as an advantage is I have four life rules that simply have to be followed. Um, the first one is the concept of the elimination of choice. Uh, I, if I have to think about things and make more decisions than is necessary, that will ruin my day. If you go to my closet in my bedroom, I have two sides to my closet and they're actually labeled. The first one says office and travel and it's t-shirts, jeans, and that's it. The second side, the side on the right, says speaking or television, and it has button-down shirts, jacket, and jeans. Because if I had to wake up first thing in the morning and go to the closet, and be like, what should I wear? Hmm, that sweater. I remember that sweater. Lara gave me that sweater. I wonder how Lara's doing. I should look her up. It's three hours later. I'm naked in the living room on Facebook, and I haven't left the house. The second rule for me is exercise. I can't start my day without exercising. I know that if I don't get that dopamine, serotonin, and adrenaline hit from that exercise, my day is going to go to hell. Rule three is simply eating healthy. I try to avoid, if my grandmother wouldn't have recognized it in 1908 as food, I try not to eat it. Eat healthy, feel healthy. Eat like crap, feel like crap. I try to eat a sort of a ketosis lifestyle, keto lifestyle where I'm eating lots of protein. I call it my chicken genocide lifestyle. I'm just basically killing chickens all day. But the, the benefit of that is that, again, that's another thing I don't have to think about, right? That's another decision I don't have to make. Wow, should I have that pizza? No, here's your chicken, eat it and shut up. And it works. And the fourth rule is the basic premise of getting outside and living your life. I remember doing a skydive probably about 10 years ago, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I exited the plane, and the air was crisp and cold, and it was like breathing in pure energy, and that feeling has always stayed with me. And, you know, it's really kind of hard to get that same feeling sitting at a desk under fluorescent lights. I won't go into a meeting without having done some jumping jacks or walked up a few flights of steps because you don't want me in that meeting. I'm useless to you. It's the oxygen mask theory. You can't help other people and do great things if you're not taking care of yourself. And I know that when I feel great, I'm at my best to do great for others. I know what happens when I don't get enough sleep. I know what happens when I eat crappy food. I know what happens uh, when I'm not exercising. I know that these things can trigger a series that could last six months, a year, two years. All of a sudden I've gained 50 pounds and I'm miserable. Make sure that you understand how your brain works. Make sure you understand the speed at which your brain works and prepare for what's gonna happen. I had a friend of mine who said, um, if you're hitting the snooze bar, you're already arriving late to your day. If you do one thing every single day that can radically change your life and only one thing, get up a half an hour earlier. The simple act of getting up a half an hour earlier means you're not rushed, you're not running out the door for getting everything you need. You have time to sit there. You have time to have a cup of coffee. You have time to pet your cat if you have a cat or pet your dog if you have a dog. You have time to relax and you're not under the gun from the second your day starts. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.